Once again, thank you so much for being here. We are the artists formerly known as Black Stars. Sessions, a very special edition from uh, Dockside Bar and Grill at the third annual End of Summer Festival. I'm here with Devise. You guys just want to introduce yourselves to the camera real quick. How's everybody doing? I'm Tommy. How you doing, Wayne? Guitar. Josh. I had heard you guys have been on hiatus for a bit. This is one of your first shows in a little bit. So um, why the sudden return? I mean, uh, it was a killer return. Well, it's, but... been, it's been too long. It should have been should have happened a long time ago. But you know, some bumps in the road. You know, getting things back on track. But. Uh, I thought this was a good uh, time to come out, you know, the end of the summer thing with all the Philly, you know, all the Philly bands, so just thought we'd come out and make a showing. That's awesome. You got anything new coming out? Any new albums you're working on right now? We're working now? on releasing the uh, EP now, probably about, about, I'd say about two months. Awesome. Working on recording a couple new tunes, put on it. No, yeah. that set was absolutely killer. I know there were a little bit of technical difficulties with the mic, yeah, but you know, you your can... voice, you got that power behind you. Nice, you can definitely man. hear it everywhere, so it was, it was good. I mean, I saw you brought your kids, are they going to be little rock stars? Oh yeah, absolutely. They, they, they both play they, an instruments she plays already? She the drums, she sings, she can sing harmony already, six years old. So, so you'll start the uh, the rock and roll partridge absolutely. family? Absolutely. <laughs> so um, what's your background though? How did Devise come about? How did that originally start? How did you all meet? Well, uh, Devise is uh, almost a resurgence of our old band, The Element, that was around early 2000s to late 2000s. Um, we put it together, we actually collaborated with Morgan Rose, a uh, drummer from Seven Dust, and oh, wow. he pretty much made us get the band back together. We all were on board with it. Uh, we have two new members, Josh on bass, and Chris is our other guitar player. That's so uh, that's why we were kind of off for a few months there, but we're back and we're just gonna start doing some shows. So. Neighbor tour with the likes of Seven Dust, right, like that? It's in the or, works. Uh, yeah, it's in the works. Hey, in the works eventually yeah, happens. It's in the works, so. yeah, it's in the works. No, talks. Yeah, a lot of collaborating. Uh, he played on the album, Morgan did. Uh, he's a great producer. Yeah, I mean, we wrote the songs right there in the studio when we walked in the door. Well, it'll so, be killer, it's, yeah. you know, a resurgence of you guys, a resurgence yeah. of Seven Dust, because they've been out of the scene for a bit, so. Yeah, yeah a little bit. It'll be fantastic. I'm here with Red Rising, if you guys want to introduce yourselves to the camera real quick. How's it going? I'm Nick. I'm the singer. I'm AJ, I play guitar. I'm Johnny, I play the bass. And I'm Jerry, and I play the drums. For the viewing public. All right, so, I mean, off camera, I heard you guys are just fully incorporated, a full business, which, first off, just tell everyone your age, because it's amazing how much you've accomplished so I'm far. I'm 17. I'm 16. I'm 16. And I'm 14. I'm not trying to pigeonhole you as a young band. I mean, just the fact that you put on a show like that at this age, you only have so much room to grow it's going to be phenomenal but all right so what's the idea behind i guess the company that is red rising uh, well in order to release this ep united as one we set up uh we have our own recording company set up we have our own llc our own production company and that allows us to copyright all our music and have full ownership over it that's phenomenal are you registered with um, a bmi or an ascap type yeah, thing yeah, yeah, well registered yeah, so who does the sound production? Who, how do you run the label? Who runs the labels? Who runs everything? Well, our, our parents actually, they have a lot of like input with the whole, like all the company, all the business side of things. Natalie too, she does a lot of the business because uh, since we're minors, we just focus on the music while, they're, while they focus on the contracts and the business side of things. It's awesome that you know so much about the scene already though. How long have you guys been playing together? How did this come about? A year? One yeah, year? together we've like with Nick, we've been together for about a little over a year. We yeah. got him last summer, That's and we've just been writing and we recorded this and that album in January, and we've just been playing since then. Yeah, we're good for you guys. It's also cool your parents are so supportive of it. I was actually talking to your dads um, back when I had a band back in middle school, high school. My parents were always saying, "You know, get a real job," but it's cool you have the support yeah. to really back you. <laughs>
company right now and I'm gonna have all of you introduce yourselves to the camera. I'm Chris Johnson of Lost in Company. Paul. I'm the guitar player and the lead singer in the band. I'm Paul, I play guitar. Uh, Chang, drums. Hi, I'm Ryan, I play only the guitar. Uh, my name's Ben, I play bass and I sing sometimes. So the band is like if Stevie Wonder and Led Zeppelin made a baby and Michael Jackson raised the baby but not and, and, and he, he invented this. Ryan invented this. He invented this. Michael, Michael Jackson raised the baby, but not creepy 90s Michael Jackson, cool 70s Michael Jackson. The cool 70s Michael Jackson that you can let your kids around, you know? That, that has white tigers that they will let him pet them. That's the kind of... It bubbles the monkey that didn't get too old and like try to rip your face and nuts off. <laughs> which, is what, which is what chimps do. Well, yeah, they're They vicious. go immediately for the eyes and the genitals so you can't breed again. I'm learning a lot in yeah. these interviews today. It's a nice fun fact. If you could pick just one band, the absolute best band, you pick, you know, your dream band of whatever guitarist you want, whatever bassist you want, whatever drummer you want, lead singer, who would it be? What would that band be? I'm gonna I'm gonna set up the, the skeleton of the band and I'm picking Whoa. I'm picking Asia era Steely Dan's backing band, their studio band, the band. of uh, oh, of Bernard Purdy, you got like Larry Carlton in there. Well, this is the and biggest. these are all people that you can choose to use or not because that's exactly what they did. Is the Bam. most members of any band yeah, today. Exactly. So, as far as the lead singer, I might switch. Guitars, right? What? Yeah, there's just se 17 yeah. guitar players. Yeah. We don't know who's singing yet. It's just. Um. Oh, Esperanza Spalding. Oh wow. Oh. Oh. Beside me, I have in the presence of wolves. Hey, start with him. Oh, I'm Justin. I play guitar and I hope I do some singing. I'm Chris, I play guitar and sing background vocals. Me, I shred guitar. I'm Vinny, I play bass, I do most of the singing. I'm Mason, I play drums and I do a little singing as well. Where'd you guys uh, yeah, come up with? Yeah, alright. Who's the Wolves? Um, 
you know, we, when you're a band, you, you bounce back and forth between names. We, it's we've, the hardest part. Yeah, we, God knows how many band names we've been through, but um, we are just like, okay, we're actually going to decide on one. So we didn't really know how to do it, so we just grabbed records of like, our favorite bands, and just so happened that Incubus had released uh, If Not Now When, right as soon as like we wanted to get a band name together. They have a name on there, uh, in the titles, in the company, in the company of Wolves. And we were like, that's cool. okay. But so at that time, you when you wanted a band name, you looked up MySpace and Facebook to oh, see yeah. if any bands had that name. Oh, I remember. So you type it in the Company of Wolves. There's like dozens of them. Like, well, I guess that won't work. And we we're gonna change the animal at first that we were the company of. And then you're just like, what's another word for kind of in the presence of the presence? They're like, yeah. that works. I was gonna say because it definitely sounds like a uh, should be like a melodic. Black metal band. <laughs> it's got that really heavy. Yes. Yeah, and then I went on, I went on Facebook and took a listen. And I'm like, oh, they're awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Overcoming gravity and soul, right here, put this entire thing together. What's up, guys? How you doing? It's been a great long day of music. It was very good. It was very uh, good. But I guess I should probably ask some questions about overcoming gravity then. Oh what do you think of the festival? How did Yo, it, uh... listen, listen. This festival, I do this twice a year, and hands down, this has got to be one of the best, if not the best. And I want to thank Balcony Sessions for doing this, for doing these interviews, for being a part of this. Oh, we're special. Look at that. You are special. You have a, you hold a special place in my heart. I dig this guy for even letting us on here. But we'll get out of sentimental because we got a rock star over here, clearly. No, no that's oh. not. No, that's no, actually no, his no. nickname, rock star. No, that guess, is true. Yeah. I should probably ask one serious question in this, right. though. For uh, Overcoming Gravity, what are the influences behind the bands? I mean, I've been asking that to everyone, but it's always nice to hear. All right, well, I know, I know Phil here takes a lot of influence from uh, Chris Cornell. I, absolutely not. No? <laughs> Keep going though. All right, so Keep guessing pull, who pull, are my... Pull, pull the string, pull yeah. the string. So right. you tell your influences. My influences, yeah. all right, when it comes... I'm gonna walk out, you guys can just keep going. Yeah. Walk out of frame. When, when it, when it comes... Right, right, where you got? I feel, I feel, this is, ener we need kinetic energy. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. When it comes down to musical influences, I take a lot of my, my styling from Chad Smith from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Carter Beaufort from Dave Matthews Band, but you know what? Not to get savvy, I take a lot of inspiration from this guy. I, I really appreciate that. Seriously. And you know, and, and honestly, vice versa. Just need one more electrified beat. So get up, get down, or get out of it. Just get it over me. Now, penetrators with rakes and torches. I can bet it for a bit for the rock. are with the good excuses if you guys want to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Jeff, I'm the drummer. I'm Adam, I play the bass. Jim, guitar, vocals, and our other guitar player isn't present right now. <laughs> but his name is Andy. I mean normally I ask where the band name came from, but I guess the good excuses is a fairly straightforward name, but how did it come to that? What else did Actually, you go through? Um, the guy who isn't here, he thought up the name The Excuses and then he googled it to see if it was already a band and they were, and he didn't like them. And he's like, well, they're not good, so we'll be the good excuses. <laughs> that is the best band name origin story I've ever heard. So. Yeah. And 
who comes up with the songs generally? Um, actually, we all write a little bit. Like if you asked who wrote, you know, such and such song, it could be any one of us. Sometimes we co-write, sometimes, you know, one person writes the lyrics on their own and then we all kind of write the music together. Um, yeah, it's, the sound is just a mix of all our different, you know, interests. Like I listen to a lot of 90s grunge. Um, you want to say what your interests are? I, I grew up on, on a lot of like punk rock and funk. So I, I like a lot of Bootsy Collins, Primus, uh, like Op Ivy, stuff That's like where that. That's Funkenstein comes from. Yeah, yeah. Ivy yeah I, I grew up on Op Ivy. Like that, their one record, it could be the only record I own and I'd be fine. Big uh, influence um, for us is definitely on um, Flaming Lips. If you, can, if you can notice that. I know like, we all have in common. Yeah, the yeah, earlier the sound. All... We'll develop a song idea just from our inane conversations. And then like, like he'll, have a, he'll say like three words and I'll come back with a whole song written about like the idea. Or like he'll have a dream about like killing somebody and write a song about it. Actually, one of our uh, one of our song ideas came from an insult I had for our bass player. Um, <laughs> we were writing one song, and the first draft of the bass line that he had I thought was really boring, and I didn't know exactly how to convey how boring it was. So I told him his bass line sounded like a school field trip to the Nightwolf Factory. And oh, that was the next song that we. Wrote. And that was the next song that we. I, I thought you know what. <laughs> would be a really funny song idea and now you know we, that was our opener one, two, one, two, three, four. I'm here with John and Brittany this time. What's I'd, up? I'd say introduce yourselves to the camera, but it's pretty obvious that it's John and Brittany. Ah. Um, ah, I'm really tired, so my jokes are horrible. <laughs> anyway, that set was absolutely fantastic. Are you gonna tell them how we know each other? Yeah, might as well. Right. He was my songwriting professor, and he gave me <laughs> he gave me B's, which is fine. I wasn't an A student anyway. <laughs> But it's good. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Good. it's fun. Right. But I don't hold any grudges at all. But honestly, it's clear why you were the songwriting professor, which is a terrible segue. But that was a fantastic <laughs> set. Well, thank you. <laughs> it was very, it's very uh, you know classic rock and roll vibe. Very powerful. It's got the punk edge to it. Right on. Where does a lot of the inspiration come from for the songs? Well, you know, uh, I would have to say that Britney is really the person that starts every one of our songs uh, because she's kind of she's the visionary of the band really I mean you know it's like it's way different from you know what I do with any other project that I'm in where I'm the sole songwriter so when we have John and Brittany songs they all start with something that she's observed you know she writes you know fantastic lyrics you know she's actually my favorite poet so that's um, awesome. I think she's amazing. So you're just singing out her art, basically. Pretty much, like I'm the mouthpiece for like all the, the words, uh, you know, that that she kind of like observes, and it's kind of cool for me because like I inhabit characters that are very unlike myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, drug addicts and you know, <laughs> yeah, the good alcoholics stuff. and stuff. You know, so, so it kind of becomes um, sort of a play, but you know, it's in the show. I but guess. It's, it's... but it, on, on the other hand, it's like I I've never really um, felt like it, inhabiting her lyrics is so easy for me you know like when we when we write songs together it's a very uh, it can be a very kind of like you know butting heads kind of a situation but when it's when it's on you know like i just kind of like sing the words right off the page and it becomes the melody <laughs> Stop! 
dive there at the end. Was that planned? It was, it was thought about, definitely. I don't know if that was the extent of it. We'll get to a, a venue, look all around, what can we do ridiculously here to make ourselves stand out a little bit more on top of our solid music. And tonight it was, there's water right there, we're gonna get hot as shit, so let's end the night in it. He was completely unplanned. I think he thought I was drowning and it's had my back. Yeah, the music itself was absolutely stellar. I mean, it's got that whole, I mean, tell me, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's got the post-hardcore, post-rock, post -y, vibe with a little progressive edge, it's got the metal influences, where do you draw from? Because it seems like it's from everywhere. It's pretty much everyone in the band has like completely polar opposites when it comes to influences and uh, so when we write it's just they all kind of come together. All-star band, if you could pick the members of the band, your actual you know, favorite musicians, best musicians, whatever you do for guitar, drums, bass, vocals, whatever, who would it be? This. That's a great answer. It is a great answer. That is such a good answer. What do you say? Like switch out, this. I switch out John. Is that your... You get rid of John? <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably put Wesley Willis on keyboards. I put Wesley Willis. Oh, yeah, all right, I'm cool with that. Wesley Willis out, on you know, keyboards. Saul, Saul Dropman on drums in place of John. <laughs> Saul Dropman like on drums. Say Saul tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> do you take back over as Frog? You, you can stay. Saul can I also can stay? Yeah. Probably Steve Perry. Steve? Uh, no, the Asian guy who replaced Steve Perry. <laughs> That guy, good. that guy is good. good. He's really good. This was the third annual End of Summer Music Festival. We're about to That's it. We're going to sleep. Yeah. Yeah.